Watch and pray. Jesus said, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the wilderness. Let him that's on his housetop not go back to get his clothes. Let him that's in the field not go back to his house. And then Jesus made an interesting statement. Is this down about verse 19? Whoa! The first time, the only time in Matthew 24, Jesus was given a discourse on what would be the sign of our coming of the end of the world. Woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. All right? Then the next verse. Pray. He said the reason you need to pray that your flat be not in the winter neither on the Sabbath day. Verse 21, for then should be great tribulation, such as what was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. But then again, verse 22, something interesting. Except those days be shortened, Jesus said, there should what? No flesh be saved. Everybody read that? Everybody understand what that means? If I don't shorten the days, there'll be nobody saved, left. I'm not talking about saved, giving your heart to Jesus. I'm talking about literally left. Then he goes on to say, for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, before you don't swallow yourself, who is the elect? That's what we want to look at tonight. You know, for the most part, the COVID, the children have been completely protected from it. Why don't you think about that for a moment? For the most part, they don't wear a mask. They eat dirt. My son, Jude, where's Jude at? Is he asleep? Jude, where are you? He had a baseball game the other night. His brother was playing, and he took his tongue and licked the entire backstop. Well, his dead mom didn't know that, but he was good. What were you thinking, man? Everything they shouldn't do, they do. Let me ask you a question. Who's taking care of them? They don't have the vaccine. They don't do all the stupid things that we told them we're supposed to do, but they're still alive, and we're dying. Are you with me? Yeah. So who's taking care of the kids? Well, let's find out. Now, Jesus mentioned two specific groups. Woe to them that are with child. What does that mean? Anybody here with child? Somebody tell me what that means. Anybody know what that means? What does that mean, Danny? Pregnant. So mommy is going to have a baby. Any mommy going to have a baby? I didn't walk to them that give suck in those days. What does that mean? A mommy's got a baby. It, you look at me like, well, I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to share with you tonight a conversation recorded in the scriptures between God and an unborn child in his mother's womb. Did you, did you know the Lord can talk to a baby before it's born in his mother's womb? Let's record it. I'm just going to read it to you. Psalms 139 verse 13. Thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. The word covered me, you hid me there. For safety, for protection. I will praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from you, Lord. When I was wrought in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, 
Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. In thy book were all my members written, when and yet there was none of them. We continue it. You fashioned them intricately with a great detail. Jude, are you awake? I want Jude to come and help me. Is Jude awake? What the psalmist said, Lord, before you made my body, and I was just a blob. You had a plan for my life, an intricate design. Come here. And you began to form me to what I would be. Come on, I want you to help me. You got back there? <laughs> I was intricately designed. Jude just found out that his mom was going to have a baby. And Jude got to see this little baby inside the, the ultrasound with his mommy's belly. And Jude looked at it and he said, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and then it done one of these numbers and he said, no, it's a fish. <laughs> What he saw. Go, up, go back, sit down now. Straight back. Don't, don't pass go. <laughs> go back to mommy. All right? But God saw a child. Did, did you hear me? God saw a child. It goes on in verse. 19 of that great chapter. How great are thy thoughts unto me? How great is the sum of them? Is that nine? What verse is that? I may have skipped it. 17. 17. It literally means this, Lord. You think about me. All the time. You think about me. <laughs> it's an unborn child talking to its creator. And the unborn child is amazed at the fact, God, you think about me. You put me in the safest place you could find on earth for my protection. And you formed me and created me with great design. And how great is the sum of your thoughts the times that you think about me, Lord. If I should count them, they're more than the sand. And how many of you know that the baby sleep in his mommy's womb? How many of you knew that? How many of your mommies knew that? If you didn't know that, just be there when they wake up. <laughs> and a little baby says, Lord, when I awake, he didn't say, Lord, you're still with me. But he said, when I awake, I'm still with you. Now think about that for a moment. He didn't say, Lord, you're with me. He said, I'm with you. Well, was it? Where was he? He was in his mother's womb. Well, he was there with him. Well, that little baby assumed that the Lord was. No, he didn't even know. That hasn't changed, America. 48 years, we've murdered God's intricately designed babies in the mother's womb at the rate of nearly 61 plus million. Castaways, we said we don't need, but now all of a sudden, we take those castaways, those aborted babies, and we take them to this place where we do our, our, what do you call it, our medical experimentation to try to grain some, grain, get, glean something from those castaways to save our mind now called a vaccine. And you think that's going to work well, America? Let's move on. Those that give suck in those days. What does God think about children? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. The disciples came to Jesus. Matthew 18 verse 1. They said, Jesus is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 2. Jesus called a little child and set him in the midst of them. 
Verse 3. And Jesus said to those disciples, except you be converted and become like this little child, there's no way you're going to heaven. Verse 4. He that will humble himself like this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 5. And whosoever receives one of these little children receives me. Verse 6. But whosoever shall offend or harm one of these little ones that believe it, it were better for him that a millstone were tied about his neck, he was drowned in the sea. What did Jesus mean? You, you know, when you see an CNN, CNN, CNN. You, you know who that is? That, that's all the nuts in the world that, <laughs> to explain everything. They may explain to you that you hurt one of these little ones, God's going to get you. You're better off dead than to hurt one of the little ones. Verse 7, woe to the world because of offenses or harmful events, but it must need be that offenses will come. Jesus said it's inevitable, but boy, it's not going to be good. Woe to that man by whom they come. Verse 8, we still on the same horse? Well, 8 follows 7, I suppose we are. If your hand or your foot offend you, Cause you to stumble, cause you to hurt one of these little ones, cut it off. It's better to go to heaven with one hand or one foot than it is to go to hell with both. Verse 9, if your eye offends you, cause you to harm one of these little ones that believe in me, pluck it out. It's better to go to heaven with one eye than go to hell with two. Are you with me? Verse 10. How does it start? What? Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones that believe in me. For I say unto you in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. What's the little boy's name? What? Alice. Alex? Alex? Ellen. Ellen. I, I'm deaf. I won't remember how many Ellen. Ellen? Ellen. E-L-L-I-S. There you go. E-L-L-I-S. Alice. Like Alice Chalmers. Alice. Alice. E. It's different, I know. You can tell, you can tell I'm not good. His angel is in heaven rejoicing because his mom and his dad made a decision for life for Jesus. The guardian angel still has a charge because you were willing to risk your life, your health, and your liberty, and your freedoms to hold that little guy in your arms. God bless you. Restore. And only the Lord knows what he has in mind for that boy. All right? I know the sisters are going to spoil it, but God's going to overcome that too. Right. <laughs> Verse 11. Not the will of the Father, one of these little ones should perish. Verse 12. If a man have a hundred sheep and lose one, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go and find that one sheep? And when he finds it, he rejoices. Moreover, the one sheep that he found in the ninety-nine that did not go astray. Verse 14, how does it start? Even so. What? Even so. Even so. How to go ahead and go further. It's not the will. It's not the will of what? The Father. The Father. What? Which is in heaven. I didn't hear you. Which is in heaven. In heaven. Why? That one of these little ones should what? Perish. Perish. Children, that's God's letter to you. And it was written a long time ago. In the end of time, God looks down. And I want you to think tonight as we close. Ladies and come. Who is God's elect? Oh, for long, so long we thought it's us. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's not us. Jesus said we have to become like them. 
It's them. Why isn't the COVID ravaged our children? I tell you why. Because Almighty God said to his angels, you stay in guard. And you protect them because they're worthy. They didn't want to kill you so they could live. They didn't want to kill you and use you as a stepping stone. They're innocent and pure. And they just trust their Heavenly Father to take care of them and to be there and to hold their hand through the devil. I know that you workers are tired, but let me tell you something. You've done the greatest thing that could be done this week. You gave time for the kingdom of heaven to come to the hearts and minds of these precious children. That God created in his own image and in his likeness. And I remind you tonight, if we're going to make heaven our home, we're going to have to become like William Bim, learn from them the innocency, the forgiveness, the willingness to believe, to trust. There's ever an hour when our nation needs to get back and become childlike it's tonight. And we need to remember when God made them, God didn't do it after they got here. God did it before. He designed and crafted and created. And had a name and a plan for everyone. You need to remember that tonight, children. Jesus loves you. Now, do you love him, your creator, the one that cares, the one that protects and keeps? Give your heart to Jesus.